EVs aren't perfect, but they do have a lot of significant benefits over combustion-powered vehicles. Electrics are quieter, cleaner, can easily be recharged at home, and they're way more efficient. If you're finally ready to switch from gas to electric, here are my top tips to make the transition as seamless as possible. Alrighty, my first two pointers have to do with actually getting a vehicle. So number one, if possible, you should grab an EV that's eligible for a tax credit. Specifically, in the US, this can save you up to $7,500 on a new electric car or as much as $4,000 on a used one. Now, unfortunately, not a lot of cars or trucks make the cut, but there are certainly some good options. And check out the description box down yonder for a link to the fueleconomy.gov website where you will find a comprehensive list. Next, when shopping for an EV, get one with the most range that you can reasonably afford. If one version of the model you like is rated at, say, 250 miles, and another will do more than 300, get the latter if possible. Having more range is never a bad thing and can be a lifesaver if you're on a trip and there's a big detour or if the weather is frigid, for instance. And that segues nicely into my next tip. Cold temperatures impact combustion-powered vehicles, reducing fuel economy and, of course, slowing how quickly they warm up. But frosty conditions have a much bigger effect on EVs, significantly reducing range. Also, running the heater will eat into your drivable miles as well, so be aware of what cold weather does. And again, get an electric vehicle with as much range as you can afford. I'll tell you, old man winter can be a real prick. Now, aside from buying something that's eligible for a tax break, when shopping for an EV, make sure to check out how much insurance and registration will cost. Since they're newer, sometimes more difficult to service, and have incredibly expensive battery packs, insurance for EVs is often more expensive than comparable gas-powered vehicles. Now, similarly, your registration fees can often be higher. Usually, states pay for roads and infrastructure through the gasoline taxes built into the price at the pump. And since that's a non-starter with EVs, they charge owners extra money up front. Thanks, government. But offsetting those increased costs, electric vehicles require way less maintenance. There's no oil to change or transmissions to flush. Plus, with regenerative braking, your pads and rotors, or shoes and drums as the case may be, will last practically forever. And this is great news, but make sure to set some money aside for tires. Electrics tend to burn through them at a much faster rate with their heavy curb weights and instant torque. Another important factor to consider when switching to an EV is the cost of electricity and how that compares to gasoline. According to the U.S. Energy Information Administration, that's quite a name, the national average price of electricity in America last October, the most recent data I could find, was 16.21 cents per kilowatt hour. And of course, you'll be paying way more than that at DC stations. The charge point location near me, for instance, is 45 cents per kilowatt hour, almost three times as much. But anyway, let's do a little math. My least favorite subject in school. A gallon of gasoline is equivalent to about 33.7 kilowatt hours of electricity. So 33.7 times 16.21 cents is 546.28. And then if you divide that by 100, because of course there are 100 cents per dollar, we see that nationally electricity costs about $5.46 to get the same amount of energy as in a gallon of gasoline. On the surface, that's not really great because once again, according to the Energy Information Administration, the average retail cost per gallon of regular grade gasoline in the US last year was just $3.52, which is about 40 cents less than it was in 2022. But it is not all bad news, certainly not. Let's say you drive a 2024 Hyundai Ioniq 5 with a 77.4 kilowatt hour battery. To completely recharge the pack, at 16.21 cents per kilowatt hour, it would cost you just $12.55 for up to 303 miles of range, which of course is the most you can get in an Ionic 5. Now, take a similarly sized gas powered vehicle, the 2024 Honda CRV, for instance. It has a 14 gallon tank, and to fill that vehicle up, 
at a cost of $3.52 a gallon, it would cost you $49.28. That's $36.73 more than to charge the battery of the Ionic 5. Next up, battery degradation is a thing, and just like your laptop or smartphone, over time, the maximum range your EV provides will slowly fall. It's important to be aware of this. However, I think the issue does get blown way out of proportion, as it's very easy to deal with this by capping how high you fill the battery and, of course, being responsible with DC fast charging. Additionally, manufacturers typically offer eight or 10-year battery warranties that usually guarantee the pack will still provide 75% of its full capacity. And really, that ain't too bad. Also, think about this. Combustion-powered vehicles also lose efficiency and performance over time. They wear out too, especially if you aren't good with maintenance. Similarly, by level two charging at home and capping day-to-day -day charges to 80%, you can keep your battery in very good shape over the long haul. Next, when switching from gas to electric, it's critical to know how DC fast charging works because you will almost certainly be relying on it if you take a long road trip. Now, a few things to keep in mind. Generally, you wanna stop charging at about 80% because going past that point often takes forever and you're better off hitting the road and juicing up again later rather than waiting for the battery to hit 100%. Next, use the charger that's right for your EV. The Chevy Bolt, for instance, tops out at around 55 kilowatts. Plugging into a 350 kilowatt charger doesn't make things go any faster, and it just annoys drivers with EVs that charge at a much higher rate, so please avoid doing that. And finally, don't always expect to hit the peak charging rate advertised on the cabinet. If other EVs are plugged in or the battery is a little bit cold, there's a good chance your vehicle will charge slower. Now, we have videos on all of these topics and many more, so check those out. And of course, make sure you are subscribed to the EV Pulse YouTube channel. We're excited to be the navigator on your EV journey. Thanks for joining us. Okay, my next tip for drivers switching to an electric vehicle is to thoroughly plan your road trips or else. DC fast chargers are still nowhere near as common or reliable as gas stations, so plan out any long drives and your required charging stops so you don't end up stranded. There are many great services out there that will help you do this, and having a few backup stations in mind is not a bad idea either, as chargers break and good, reliable ones may be occupied by other EV drivers. And finally, in my not so humble opinion, the single most important thing you need to do when switching to an electric vehicle is install a level two charger. Yes, you can live without one of these, but putting one in at home or wherever you park is what allows you to take full advantage of the benefits EVs offer. I mean, you can juice up every night and have a full battery when it's time to head to work in the morning. We already covered this, but you pay way less for electricity than when DC fast charging. And depending on the vehicle and hardware you buy, some systems even support bi-directional charging, so during a power outage, you can run your house from the energy stored in your EV's battery. Get your garage ready for an EV now and enjoy the best experience from day one. Also, click the link on screen to check out our recommended Level 2 charger. All right, if you've been paying attention, say it along with me. First off, buy an EV that's eligible for tax credits. Get a vehicle with the most range that you can afford. Beware of old man winter. Double check those insurance rates and registration fees before signing the dotted line. Electrics will save you money on maintenance, except for tires. Consider the price of electricity before buying an EV. Be aware of battery degradation. Understand how DC fast charging works. Know that it's wise to thoroughly plan road trips. And lastly, install a level two charger at home for the ideal EV experience. And if you're still leery about getting an electric, you might consider a hybrid instead. Click here to learn the advantages and disadvantages of each and what sets these two vehicle types apart.